the record on this. And I do, okay. Yeah, I can see you recording. And if I do pin video, it's just me. Yeah, pin your own video. You can't really see the recording straight away. You have to wait a little bit. So you can then you can now stop recording and then record again when you're ready. So there will be like two clips. Let's see. Let's Uh, then this is gonna be tricky but let's say you need something like two sticks of the same same thickness so I found two spoons and that's a kind of a good thickness it could be a little bit thinner if you have something like that um, if you have two of these ones for example that might be a little bit too thin something like that No, it's essential, we can work around it, but this is gonna make, um, kind of gonna make the difference. <clears throat> a little bit of water as always got a couple of extra tools here Do you have do you have another one of the same size? Because we need uh, we need two. Um, I can't hear you. Um. Sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. Um, is it to make sure that it's like clay in between them is the same thickness? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So something like that. Um, I also found two sticks, for example. They were um, holding out a couple of uh, orchids plants, so these can actually work too. Do you think these would work if I put them like that? Um, they're a little bit thick, I think, because okay. that's going to be the thickness of this slab. We're going to do slab building today. Okay. So something a little bit thinner, maybe. Or you can get started with that one, and then it's going to be easy just to roll a little bit, um, a little bit thinner. So that might work.
Okay, I've actually got this rolling pin. Yep. Oh, that's perfect. It's got, it's got like, yeah, edges on the side. So I think that's like, I think it's eight mil or 10 mil. Yeah, that's perfect. That sounds okay, good. cool. I'll use that then. That's good. Um, yeah, we should be, we should be ready. Let's get started. So the plan for the project for today is going to be a slab rolled um, teapot. Let's step it up. Oh. <laughs> let's see how that goes. Um, sounds good. Right. Um, let's get started. So very important to have a cloth on your table because um, otherwise the um, um, the clay is going to stick to it. So it's always very important to have something that can absorb water, like uh, like a cloth. Oh. You have some nice cloth as well with texture. You can take advantage of it, and it can give you a little bit of texture on the, on the, on the slab. And for me, I'm going to keep the two um, the two spoons on the side. Um, let's see. Let's see how big we want to go because um, with slabs, ideally we see. Um, ideally, we want to use clay a little bit, like to dry a little bit the clay once it's the right the right size, right the right um, shape. Um, now I don't have a hair dryer either, so I'm gonna keep a little bit smaller, a little bit thicker, to make sure to work with it a little bit easier. Um, let's see how it goes. Should be okay. So I would say we can start with about. Maybe a kilo of clay, I think. Yeah, that's a, that's about it. Might give it a little. Yeah, that should be it. And now we keep a, a little bit of extra on the side for all the details for the spout for the lid. lid. Oh, did you finish the um, did you finish the shark the other day? Oh my god. I did, yeah, yeah. I've left them in a plastic bag, just um sort of slowly slowly drying out on my on my bookshelves. Oh nice. Is that about enough? Yeah, that was good. When I work with slabs, uh, yeah, I like to use a little bit more clay the, than I need because then there's always like, you know, some scraps and cut it around rather than not have enough and then you need to add more. So a little bit more is good. I think this one as well is quite a lot. Be fine. Perfect. And then we're gonna roll it um, first into a big, um, big sausage, and then we're gonna tap it a little bit flatter. So you want to have a sort of rectangle, um, just to make our life easier when we're rolling it. We're gonna make it already quite flat. What we're gonna do eventually is to roll it and roll our slab up into a cylinder. Um, that's why we want it already a bit longer. That's good, like a good naan bread. Looking good. 
So now we can start rolling it. So as I was saying, we're all set. You have a very nice rolling pin. So it's going to make your life easy. I'm going to use these ones. Um, here you sort of decide also what shape you're going to go for for the, for the teapot. Of course, if it's longer and quite narrow, just love. Uh, the teapot is going to be a little bit wider and shorter, which um, it's fine. It works as well. Um, otherwise, you can make a little bit um, a little bit narrower and taller. It's going to be a little bit more more elegant. Um, so for that reason, my one is quite long, but still a little bit narrow, a little bit too narrow. So I'm going to start rolling in this direction. Scratch it a bit more in the other way. Cool. Come right up there like this. And I always start, always start from the center. Oh, this is just the right size. Okay. Start from the center and then roll a little bit forward and a little bit towards myself. And you know when your slab is ready, when you can roll your rolling pin and it's gonna, it's almost not gonna touch the clay, but it's just gonna run freely on top of it. Almost there. Of course, if you see if you see it's going too wide or too long, exactly, you can either roll it the other way or flip them, flip the clay about um, ninety degrees, and then roll it the other side, and it's going to stretch in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yep, looking good. Is that um, big enough? Um, it's up to you. What do you think? Uh, let me see. Yeah, my one is a little bit bigger. Let me, I'll go one level lower on the, on the roll. Yep. Careful. Let me see how thick it is, because my one is about, yeah, eight millimeters or so. So you don't want one, to go... One's probably about eight. Yeah. Looks like a good thickness. So we want to make sure that it's not going to be too thin. Otherwise, it's a bit of a pain to have a nice and straight. Okay, I'll leave it as it is then. Yeah, it can be a smaller, like a little, little smaller. It's definitely going to be enough for two, two cups, let's say. Yeah. A little, two cups. That's good. Perfect. Right. Now, my idea was to make it, um, you can either make it into a cylinder or we can make it into a little cone. So I'm going to taper it a little bit on the top. And to do that, where is my knife? Yeah. Got my knife. So I'm going to clean it, I'm going to make it into a rectangle, just between the top 
between the bottom. That's going to be I mean, again, it's um, it's hand building, so we never really try to get something perfect and perfectly smooth. I mean, it's achievable, but it takes a lot of practice, lots of um, lots of patience. <laughs> that looks good. And I was just saying, I'm gonna taper my one a little bit, so instead of cutting it straight, that will be like that, not very straight. There you go. I'm going to taper a little bit, so I'm going to cut the top a little bit smaller. Not much, but it's going to give a little bit of uh, little movement. Got it. So you're going, you're going like in towards the top. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> okay. And if you want to be a little bit more precise, of course, you can use um, any stick or, or a tool. Oh, we have a chopping tool. Oops. Uh, the chopstick. I've got a, I've actually got a ruler on my... <laughs> Yeah, that is perfect. Yeah, I didn't realize it would be good for pottery when I bought it. Yeah, I need to remember my future studio to get one of those, or well, a few of those. That's a good tool. And um, you can use it as, um, as a ruler as well to, to have straight lines, if you want to make it a little bit more precise. I'm eyeballing it a little bit, so I'm tapering the top. Maybe about a centimeter, centimeter and a half um, on each side, a little bit, a um, little bit smaller. Right, we can go. One very important thing when you're working with slabs is to keep in mind that clay has a sort of memory. That means once you roll your slab nice and flat, um, if you, when you lift it, if you fold it or, um, or deform it, um, even if you stretch it flat again, when it dries, it's going to warp a little bit again. So to keep it flat, we're going to try to keep it as flat as possible and just handle it as little as, um, as, little as we can. As we can, okay. Um, that looks good. Also, that's already a good time if we want to give some texture to our clay. Um, there's, you can use different tools. Um, again, you can use the, um, uh, the, chops, uh, the chopstick if you want to add dots. That's going to give a nice texture. I found a couple of very good things in my flat. This is a pasta making stamp. Ah, nice. And and then it's going to be very good to give it a little, I don't know if you can see it, same way. Going to make a few and then show it. My grandma gave me this actually, this is a good one. I should make some pasta one of these days. I made some ravioli the other day, but I didn't have one of those. Yeah, oh yeah, this would have been a good tool. How did that go? Was it good? Uh, it was okay, yeah, it was a bit chewy, but it was my yeah, first yeah. time, so. <laughs> Yeah, the tricky thing with pasta is to make it um, very, 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 very thin. Very thin. Yeah, you really need a roller. I only use this. You really need a roller to do it properly, don't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's um, that's the best. They say you need to, you need to be able to read the newspaper through it once uh, <laughs> once you rolled it. Uh, so it needs to be very thin. Um, but yeah, you can use lots of different tools. Again, you could use a spoon again to make that scale effect that we did the other time on. Um, on the hand building oh, salt pig. I also have this very nice cup that has this little pins all around. Let's see, I'm gonna roll it. Give it a good texture. Oh yeah, that's good.
I'm going to leave a little bit of empty space in the middle because then I'm going to use that space to add details to it after the, um, the teapot is ready. So I might give it a face and add some eyes as well and a nose, something like that. Cool. Another option you can, you can add to it. That's always one thing to keep in mind with clay is that we're so used to, to drawing and patterns then you do realize you can really add to it and make it 3D. Quickly check the size. Let's see if it's a good size. Yeah, that would do. Came up quite tall. Are you able to work from home in these days? Or? Yeah, I am. It's, it's not too bad for me. Um, I, I sometimes do it, well, you know, before all this crisis. I, I used to do it once or twice a week anyway. So. Um, okay, nice. So the transition wasn't, wasn't that bad. No, exactly. It's a bit uh, lonely, but um, actually working, getting work done is not too bad. So. Yeah, oh, nice. Yeah, less distractions. <laughs> a bit less distractions. Yeah, exactly. You ready? Oh, nice. Yeah, all good. Did, did you did you put all your other bits back together into a ball? Yeah, that's all my scraps. Um, I'm gonna wedge them a little bit later as well, so we make sure there's no air bubbles trapped. But for now, I'm gonna put the tools on the side. Perfect. <clears throat> and before before we stick it together into a cylinder. What helps is to cut the edges, the two corners, the two sides. They're going to be, um, they're going to be sticking together. Instead of keeping them in straight like they are now, I'm going to cut it into an angle. If that makes sense. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So keep my keep my knife about forty five degrees. Got it. And then cut underneath. Underneath. Sort of. yeah. And, and we're going to do this both both sides and make sure you keep your the knife at the same angle so from here i'm going to move around the other side but keep the same angle don't go the other way otherwise it's not gonna um it's not gonna overlap This clay is quite soft. One side is done. And as, as I was saying, let's move it a little bit. Keeping the knife at the same angle, I'm just going to cut the other corner.
Okay. So once we've done that, we can start um, scoring both ends. Um, you can either use the serrated knife or you can use a fork, whatever you, whatever works best. Okay. Need to be scoring that a little bit on the other side. Once it's done, that we can lift um, we can lift the slab. Now a very good way to lift it without deforming it too much is to slide your hand under the um, under the cloth. And you're gonna be able to lift it this way. Let's see if I can show it. There we go. So we're not picking it from one um, from one corner on one side. And then just flip it onto my hand. Yep. So you can hold it like that. Perfect. And now we can put some good texture underneath. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. You can even roll it the other way around and use that texture on the outside. Oh, I do got got a quite nice texture as well. If you can nice. see. Huh. Might take advantage of it. The other one is a bit crap. <laughs> 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 gonna use that one. Perfect. So now holding it on um on one side, that's gonna be the wider. I mean, you can go the other way around as well if you want to have a narrow bottom and then it flares out on the top. That's another option as well. And gently rolling it on itself. Good. Like the proportions on your one, I think my one is actually a little bit too well. It's very tall to be more of a jug, but be a very elegant and tall teapot now. Perfect. And of course, once we go here, you see the two um, two ends should overlap. Very good, very good. And you can add a little bit of water. Or again, as I was saying last time, when you do. Um, when you work from home, if you want to make a very nice slip, just mix a little bit of water, clay, and, um, and a bit of vinegar. And vinegar really helps to, it sort of dissolves the clay, the slip, and um, makes it blend properly. Good amount of water, one side and the other. And then we can put it together. I'm going to first match it very gently. And then to make sure that you don't, you don't deform the shape too much, I'm going to put the rolling pin on the inside and push against the junction there. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to hold it from the back. And in this way, I'm going to be able to push and blend the two halves together without deforming it. Okay. We're gonna lose our texture in this point, but it's the point that we're gonna take advantage of, and we can stick the um, either the spout or the handle on that side, so it's not gonna affect too much the um, the result. My, mine's not very circular. Does that matter? No, no, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah. 
what you could do if you want something even more precise is to have uh, make a template out of um, out of paper. So with the ruler and pencil, get the proportions, the line straight. Um, give it a try, rolling it up, and then you can lay it on um, on top of the clay and follow it. And it's gonna give you very, very, very neat, predictable results. Yeah. Look good. So go this way. And if you can fit your hand in it, then you can do the same, holding the rolling pin on the outside and then blending, blending the junction on the inside. Now I can't reach all the way down, but I'm gonna use um, one of the spoons as a tool so I can reach. It's always I have a little dimple here where it's where I press it together. So if you want to make it um, a bit more even, you can roll a um, very little um, coil between your fingers and then stick it here, and use okay. that extra clay to to fill the fill the dimple. A little gallery I've got there. Just done it. And you can either keep the base straight, going straight down like that. I'm flaring it out a little bit because I thought it was going to look a little bit better. And then I'm not sure it actually looks better, but keep it on the side. And now we can wedge a little bit of all the scraps that we had earlier. And we're going to roll another slab about the same thickness and we're going to cut, um, cut the bottom out of it.
once you made it back into a ball, then I'm gonna squish it into a um, to a disc like a fat cookie. Then again, I'm going to place my two wooden guides on the side, two spoons. A little bit dark. Let's get the light. There we go. Okay, looking good. And now we're going to use it for the bottom and the lid if it's enough. Otherwise, we can roll a little bit more. So you place it on top. First, use the knife. Or, or actually, got a nice little knife. So I'm just gonna make a little, little line following the edge. One for the bottom, and one for the top. Oh, if you have a cake stand by any chance at home, that would be quite good. It works like a, um, like a um, spinning table, turning table. Ah, uh, no, I don't, but I should get one. <laughs> oh, <good>, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Then, of course, once we've done the line, then we can follow it and cut it out. So it's just the same again for the lid upside down. Yep, exactly. Two. Hmm. This is gonna be enough actually for my handle, so I'm gonna keep them keep the slab I rolled on the side. Unless um do you know how to pull um handles? How to what sorry? How to pull handles, like the, um, the traditional way to make handles for for, pop, for, for mugs usually. Um, no, I don't think so. Usually I would just roll this out and then cut her. Okay, so I show you, I can show you a couple of different techniques. You can use, of course, the slab, or we can make a coil like we did last time. Um, I'll show you again. Oh, wait, let's skip this one for later. I'll show you all the techniques later. <laughs> one thing at a time. Perfect. And once our base is ready, of course, a little bit of score and slip 
both at the bottom of the pot and on the rim of the of the pots in here. And every now and then again, if you see the, the cylinder is losing a little bit of shape, you can use the rolling pin, put it inside and then push out and shape it with your hand. My one looks a little bit more like a chimney at the moment. And I wouldn't do it now, but if you want to give a foot ring to your um, to your teapot, uh, I wouldn't do it now because it's too soft. So when you put it upside down, it's going to squash it and um, and just ruin it. So it's not going to look great. Uh, but if you wait for your for your teapot to be leather hard, or yeah, leather hard works, and then roll a coil, or you could even make um, a slab. And cut a circle and then another circle on the inside so you have that little ring that you can stick it at the bottom. I'll show you um, what this is going to be. Yeah. I'm just going to quickly show you on now using the coil. 
Which, let's see. Bit too small. So with a little bit of score and slip, you could stick either yeah. a coil or a ring made out of a slab and give it um, a foot ring. You can blend it here properly. It's going to look quite nice. Might leave this one on for now. Let's see. It might, it's just going to get squashed, but let's have it there. Oh, I didn't even score and slip. Yeah. Something like that. We've got a nice, nice foot ring. I could blend it on the inside as well, but now because it's too soft, if I try and do that, um, it's gonna, it's gonna stink. So I'm just gonna leave it. Right, um, so now we can start working on the lid. And oh. I'm just smoothing off the um, smooth it off the edges just to make it a little bit less sharp, a little bit rounder. It. Sits on top. Yeah, perfect. And there is um there is two ways that we can we can approach this. Let's see if we can make it. Okay. Perfect. So one would be to um, you're gonna stick coil on the inside of the of the lid, a little bit narrower, of course, so that it's gonna sit on top and it's not gonna slide off. Or if you want to make it slightly different, what you can do is to cut this one of the same of the size that it's gonna it's gonna slide into it. Um, I might do both examples actually. I'm gonna show you. Um, so I'm gonna keep this one. Let's keep this one the regular way. So I'm gonna roll a little coil, a bit of extra clay. And it doesn't have to be too thick. It can go quite thin because it's just gonna prevent the slip, the, the lid from sliding around. I'm gonna test the size first on the inside. Yeah. Cut it, see if it works. Yep, that works. And then a bit of score and slip. I'm gonna stick it at the bottom here. And that's gonna be one way to work your lid like that. Otherwise, if you want to do it slightly different, it's going to be a little bit more complicated, but it's not a good way to do it. Is to go the other way. That means I'm going to still roll a coil. Oh, I squashed my other one. Okay. Still roll a nice little coil. But this time I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick the coil on the inside of the teapot. So something like that. Leaving this gap. And then a bit of score and slip. And then what we can do is to cut another little circle that is gonna fit inside. So the lid is gonna be See, yeah, yeah. out of the teapot. Um, two different ways, they work both ways, so I've done both. 
you can decide what you think is going to look nicer. Um, this one here is probably like the first the first way. It's the one that's going to look a little bit tidier at the beginning when um, we don't have much experience because um, that once it sits on top, it's easy to work around it, make it fit, make it look nice. Uh, the other one you need to make sure that you cut the um, um, you cut um, the lid just the right size that it's going to sit in the inside. Um, it might have a little gap on the right or on the left, so it might not might not look as neat. A good, a good way if you want to go for the second, second type of lid, lid and um, you want to cut it the right size, what I do once I roll the slab, I lay it on top and very gently press onto it like that. And that's yeah. going to leave, it's going to leave a little circle, a little line in the clay. Yeah, okay. And that gives it the right size. Yeah, there you go. And same technique, I haven't mentioned it, but the same technique we use for the for the hand building. If I'm rolling a coil and then I want to stick it on the lid, before doing that, I'm gonna tap it on the table. Oh, 
can see it. Okay, so just tapping it a couple of times. <clears throat> so that's going to give me a nice and flat edge. Yeah. Looking good. <clears throat> At this point as well, we can decide, of course, if you like it to keep it clean, we can just leave a lid like that. Uh, but of course, you can give it, we can give a little knob or a little handle on top. So. And here we can, we got lots of different options. It can just be a little sphere, for example. And I'm gonna tap it. Place it on top. <clears throat> we can go for something a little bit different. Starting from a sphere, I'm gonna squash. I'm gonna squash it at that with my fingers. Squash a little bit too hard, oops. To make a little disc with two dimples on the sides, so that's going to be easy to pinch and lift. Again, tap it on the table. We got this lid here, and that can be a nice, nice little handle as well. Lots and lots of options. This might work here. Put this here. Um, we can roll a little coil as well and make into a ring. Ring will work as well. Um, it can be a little feature as well if you want to make a um, like a bumblebee, for example, a little insect, a little animal, and, um, and stick it on top. That always works really well for um, for a novel.
<clears throat> Let me show you here the other option. I made, um, I still gave it a little gallery there. You don't oh, know. Yeah. And if you get it the right size, you can just slot it in. No, she's going to be able to take it off now. <laughs> But yeah, it's a different option, a little bit riskier, but it's not coming off. Yeah, okay. And to have a nice and neat work done, um, all these little lines every time you're joining things together. Um, if you don't want to blend it together, but you want just to keep it clean, um, a little brush will be the best. Just a nice work, little brush, and you can brush it and smooth it off. Or if you have anything like wood, is might not be the best because it's a little bit too hard. If you had something softer, it would do. But anything pointy, you can just very gently clean up the lines. Yeah, okay. Like score along it. That's it on top. And then take your time for for the lid and then I show you how to make um we're gonna work on the handle. Nice, very, very good. Much better than mine. <laughs> You're trying to make multiple ones to show me all the techniques. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like a good excuse. No, thank you.
Let me know when you're ready for the for the handle. Will do. For the handle. Will do. Not long. No. Oh, okay. Um, so starting from the, well, I don't really need to show you the other two techniques. So the, the main one is the, um, is the coil. So you can really just roll a coil. Um, did I show you how to roll a coil and then use a board on the top to make it even? Yes, briefly, I think, last time. Okay, so I'll just show you again. <clears throat> I'm going to work on... Um, we don't really need the cloth to rolling the coil, otherwise it gets a little bit messy. But you can start rolling it between your hands. Oh, I got a little bit of fresh clay because my other one was getting a little bit dry. So see, if you see it start crackling, like not crackling, but cracking like this one here. Yeah. Then it might just get a little bit too too dry. It's better to leave it on the side, and then we're gonna reclaim it later. Okay, I'll just get some new one then. So a very good tip if you want to make a very, very even um, coil, because of course they tend to have your finger marks on top. Okay. Once it's done, if you have a cutting board, like the one you showed me here, like chopping board. Yeah. Then what you can do is to hold in your hand, if you want to keep your fingers underneath like that. So that's gonna give you the thickness Gonna move everything, otherwise it's gonna make a mess. So keeping the fingers there, try to keep it as even as possible, and then you just roll it a few times. <clears throat> you can feel it. There is a point when it's not wobbling anymore, but it's uh, it's sliding nice and smoothly. And as you can see, that's gonna give you a very very good and even. Nice. 
yeah, nice. <clears throat> so as you can see, it's a very, very easy way if you want to be very neat with the handles, with the uh, with coils. Um, it's a bit big. <laughs> get rid of some because it's a bit big i can i can dip this in water and save it all later can't i yeah 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 exactly so don't worry too much another extra tip because of course this coil is going to be round if you want to give it because handles are nice when they're a little bit oval um section so if you want to go the extra mile and give it an oval section what you can do is the same thing, but now we're just gonna wiggle it a little bit. And slowly and gently press down. A little bit more. And you can feel it under the board. So it's gonna get a little bit thinner on one side. And that's a very good handle. Um, another technique as well to, to make handles, of course, you can just roll a slab and then cut it out. You can cut just a little strip or if you want, you can use a, um, you can make a template, for example, if you want to give a particular shape and then cut it out. And that could be, that's a very good way if you want to give a very particular handle to your cup or, or, or the teapot. Um, otherwise, I also show you if you usually work on the wheel, I show you a very good, uh, like the typical way to pull on a handle. So for that, we need um, it's going to get a little bit messy, but it's clay, so expect that. Um, so we need a plastic bowl, something like that that we do, and I'm going to fill it halfway um, with water. So I'm just going to go and grab it, and I'll be back in a second. I'm also going to grab a um, towel. It's gonna be messy. Um, do you want to try and make one with me, or do you just want to? I can just show you if you want. Because I'll, I'll, just, I'll just watch you do it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to grab a little bit of clay, or quite a lot of clay. <laughs> Make it into a sort of teardrop shape. Why is more looks like a parsnip more than a teardrop? <laughs> yeah. 
And at this point, what you do is to hold it nice and strong from the top and plenty of water. You want to make it very, very wet. This is when you want to make sure there's no underage watching because it gets a little bit weird. <laughs> and holding it like that, very, very gently, always with lots of water. I'm going to pull the clay down, get this a little bit higher up. Okay. And I'm going to twist it every now and then, just want to make sure that it goes, um, it's as even as possible. Perfect. Very gently. Plenty of water. Perfect. When it's about, mm, <clears throat> I would say like twice the size that we want, because that's already it's still very thick. I start, instead of using my whole hand, I'm going to shake my hands like that. So I'm going to use my, um, my index curved into a hook and then my thumb is facing right in front of it. So if yeah. you think about it, it's, it's the same movement you do um, when you're holding a cup. So you hold your yeah. cup, <laughs> holding your hand there. Yeah, okay. And at this point, I'm gonna start shaping it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That way, turn it 180 degrees. And keep pulling it. Now, I've got this one a little bit too big. Perfect. Almost there. Always make sure to make it um, much bigger, much longer than you need, because then we're going to cut uh, the bottom, and from here we're going to cut it probably around here. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Once that's done, <clears throat> good way to um because now it's going to be very wet and very soft so to make it hold the shape what i do is to hold it from the bottom curl it up like that and then i'm gonna make it i'm gonna let it sit somewhere standing like that nice and if you have a of course if you have a like oops um, if you have a, a hair dryer or anything like that, then you can dry a little bit. Otherwise, you can do that when you start the project. So by the time um, you're done, it's going to be a little bit drier. And again, you can just cut it here and here. Yeah. And you have cool. a nice and smooth handle. Yeah, it's good, Nick. That looks very satisfying. <laughs> yeah, it is. Especially when you flip it at the end. Yeah. Uh -huh. Managed to keep it actually quite clean, apart from lots of water and clay on my laptop. <laughs> this can go back there. Uh, I think I've lost you. Oh, sorry, I stopped my video by accident. Mm. Okay, so back to our handle. Let's see. This is big. I'm going to cut it a little bit. There's another little tip uh, to attach handles that I like to do. And what is, to, what is it? Is to hold the handle about a centimeter um, below, the, below the end, below the top. And then I'm going to use my fingernail and tap it this way. And that works really well for two reasons. One is that, of course, I'm scoring it with my fingernail in the meantime, but it's also flaring it out, you see, like a sort of little mushroom. And I'm going to use that little bit of extra clay that flared out to, to blend it together with the rest of the shape. And here again, um, matter of choice, you can have a C handle. So do the same on both hands and stick it like that. Or you can make into a, oops, a S 
Enzo. Stick like that. You can go fancy, of course, you can do it what you like. You can make a little, little run there at the bottom like that. It's a bit up to you what's your what you prefer. I'm gonna stick my hands all on the on the line where the junction of the of the slab was, just to sort of hide it a little bit. We have score and slip as always. And make sure to apply a good pressure when you're sticking the, the handle on. So again, if the clay is still a bit soft, um, you can put um, put a rolling pin or a tool inside so you can press without deforming it. My handle is a little bit tiny, considering the shape. It's going to be a very heavy teapot, but. Another little tip when you're applying, when you're sticking the handle on, put it in front of you, nice and straight, and, uh, and make sure that it's straight. Sometimes you you focus on the, um, on the profile on the side and then you realize that it's not, it's not very aligned. And that's gonna bug you forever.
And take your time with the handle, let me know when you're ready, and we can work on the spout. Here as well as always when you when you're touching especially handle if you want to make them a little bit stronger you can roll a little coil and then put it around it and blend the clay together so it's going to keep a bit, a bit more solid um attach it to it here's a little mug actually i'm using that i made a while ago and i made um made a dent a little dimple into the mug yeah but it works quite well but, yeah, the size of me. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, I think I'm done. Yeah, let's see the handle. It's a bit fragile, but. Oh. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's good size. Yeah. Perfect. Good, good, good one. Right. Now here's the tricky one, tricky one, because we need to um, make the spout. Um, so we're gonna start from um, from a slab again. We're gonna roll another little cylinder, essentially. Um, if you have again something like um, the spoon I had earlier, I think you had something similar um, that can help to make it. Yeah, perfect. That can um, help make it a little bit, um, a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller. Otherwise, it's tricky. Perfect. So we roll our clay into a little log. Should I get new clay? Um, yeah, might be better because we need to fiddle with that a little bit. So it's better than fresh one. Like before, we're gonna make into a um, little log and then flat it out to a little tongue shape. This needs to be thinner than the uh, the main one. Um, yeah, a little bit thinner is going to be better. It's going to keep it a little bit lighter. It's good to it's good to roll quite a lot more than you need because that means we can make we can make a couple of them if something goes wrong with the first one. Looking good. Um, again, we clean it up into a rectangle, and um, essentially we want to make two little cylinders. And then we're gonna use the um, gonna use the spoon to wrap it around it, so that's gonna give us the, um, the thickness of the hole. In the cool. How big does it need to be then? How um, we need How big to, does it need to be? figure just, it just out. Just big enough to wrap once around there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
leave it of course a little bit extra just to just to blend it together you can go the other way around if you want and start rolling it like that around and then you can see what's the right size and then cut it Just gonna roll a couple of them. I mean, of course, if you want to go for a bigger spout, you can roll it the other way around, make it a little bit bigger and shorter. Um, but if you're going for something a little bit longer and thinner, then the spoon is gonna is really gonna help. To be of scoring slip as always. How long do you think I need it? Um, I made this one. This is quite long. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this much and probably about this much here. So what's that? A good 10, 10 12 centimeters maybe.
and when you're working on it every now and then you can hold um, hold the spout and twist the spoon just to make sure it's not gonna it's not gonna stick to it And um, in the meantime, for the handle, I'll show you again like a couple of different um, techniques. One way is to um, just to make a hole, hole in your teapot, and stick the um, stick the spout on. And um, that's pretty much it. Otherwise, if you want to um, to give a little strainer, then what we need to do is to um, roll a little cylinder. So you can use a little uh, wedge like this one here. What's this to do, sorry? Um, that's if you want to make, um, instead of making just a hole in here, you can um, you can make little holes, make a little strainer. Ah, I see, yeah, yeah, okay. To give it the extra, the extra mile there. And um, the way you can do it is to use a little wedge. If you roll it up into a little cone, something like that. So that's gonna give you a wider, wider touch there. Yeah. And then to this one, well, you can leave it like that if you want to keep it quite small. Or well, then you can stick the rest of the um, rest of the spout to make it a little bit, a um, little bit longer. Yeah. Um, different options. Might go for this one here. Yeah. Why not? I'm just going to get my charger because my laptop's about to run out of battery. Ooh, yep. And um, I'm just working on the strainer now. For my one, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you, of course, the other way too. Um, but I'm using the um, the chopstick to make little holes in it. Um, it's very important at this point to make holes actually quite big, because first it's gonna shrink during the firing, and then once you glaze it, it's gonna be covered in glaze as well. So that's gonna make it even um, even smaller. So it's very easy to um, to block them up.
are you gonna make it this way too or are you just making the um, the simple one um i can't decide hmm. i think i'm gonna do it that way is that with the yeah with that thing yeah you, you've got a hole on this side no <laughs> ah. <laughs> That's not gonna work, is it? Nah, I'm gonna make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Oh, still there. Yeah, I'm gonna cover it. Yeah, so for this one, I'm gonna give it this very short spot now. And then I'm gonna. Sorry, how did you make the, the, the interior, the middle bit? This one? Yeah. yeah. Um, you roll a, roll a slab and then you cut a little wedge, something like this. Got it. So it's round on. Um, on one side. Now maybe try to make a little bit taper, be more tapered than mine. My one ended up having like quite wide um, end here. And this is gonna be a little bit too small for it. I need to work, I need to work my way around it. Didn't realize it's ten to nine. That went quick. I was actually worried this one it was going to be a too quick project, but we took good. We took our time and did it properly. Just gonna cover that hole with a little bit of clay. Nobody saw it. One, one very good thing about this step is that because you're not making a, a very long spout and work on it, um, but you have you have first this little little half, is that you can uh, you can still stick your finger there and apply pressure from the inside while you're smoothing out. Yeah. So that's um, to give a very strong. It's gonna touch it very strong. Gonna make a couple of extra holes in there.
<clears throat> and because I made this one a little bit too wide, I'm gonna add a little coil around it. Like that, just to make it a little bit narrower so it's gonna fit better. A bit messy, but Bless you. Thanks. How are you doing with um with the spout? Yeah, I'm getting there. I actually just I did one of these and then I decided to just make that a spout. Oh, okay. So a little bit shorter. Yeah, it works. Works well. So 
and it works. And for that one, you can decide. I mean, you could still make a little strainer and just make like you know two or three little holes. Yeah. Um, of course, being careful not to make it too thin. Um, otherwise, of course, if you're gonna use it for um, with tea bags, then just make a big hole, same size, and go straight. Um, both cases, um, I show you here. I'm gonna attach this one to it, but I mean, it's fairly straightforward. Just gonna hold it, gonna hold it still with um uh, with the spoon inside, because then I can work with it without deforming it. Um, before attaching it, I'm gonna try and figure out. So always keep in mind that tip of the spout needs to be um at least at the same level of the of the lid. If it's lower, then it means if you if you feel your teapot too much, then it's gonna overflow. Yeah. So to keep it safe. I always use the knife trying to find the right, right angle and cut around it. Mm, looking good. And you also want to make sure that um, the tip of the spout um, is quite sharp. So once, you, once you're done attaching it, you want to make it a little bit thinner. Because um, if it's uh, if it's nice and sharp, it's not gonna drip. If it's too if it's too round, that's when it, when it drips. Okay. And here a little bit of score and slip, and then I'm just gonna blend it together. Looks very ugly now, but hopefully with the blending, it's gonna look nice.
Um, in the meantime, I show you, I'm just, um, I have my scraps of clay. It's getting a little bit too dry. So I'm going to squeeze it quite thin. So I'm increasing the surface, dip it in water, and then put it back in the plastic. Cool. Easy. But yeah. So that's going to give it that extra extra water that's lost. Perfect, but I think that should be pretty much it for today. Of course, as always, take your, take your time now to finish it up. Do you have any other question? Something you want to finish up? Um, I don't think so. I think, should I, like, should I leave the lid on it to dry, is that okay? Uh, yeah, that's fine. So they should come together um properly maybe every now and then when it's still a bit wet lift it and put it back on so you're sure that it's not going to stick to it but it shouldn't happen it should be fine okay. cool. um, the rest should be it um yeah same thing especially for something like this that you have very thin sides very thin portions there um it's best to let it wrap very loosely with some plastic so it's going to um dry very slowly yeah. And yeah i did that with my shark last time and it's um it's actually not dried that much which is good so it's drying very slowly yeah yeah that's perfect especially now that you don't have any rush um you can leave it there for a month to dry yeah exactly that'd be perfect okay well that was a cool one session hope you enjoyed okay. it <laughs> and again with the hand building that's the good thing of course you've seen the steps now for one project and then you can make it a thousand different ways yes oh i was gonna ask um yep. if i if i were to buy more clay online okay what clay would you recommend that i buy because there's like stoneware earthenware like there were so many different kinds and i didn't know which i should even get um so at clover studio we use uh stoneware okay um so you can use that one and we're gonna fire it at the right temperature. Earthenware is the one that fires a little bit lower temperature. Okay. So it might not gonna work in um it's not gonna work in clovers clovers firing. Okay, cool. That's one. Yeah. I'll get stoneware, I guess. Any, any stoneware, yeah. Uh, for hand building, if you want um if you want to go a little bit bigger things than this, um grog clay actually works really well, the groggy one. Is grog. The, it's a little bit rougher. Um maybe don't get the crank. Crank is the one that's really, really rough. And uh, that's very good for bigger 
bigger building, like bigger uh, projects and constructions. Okay. But if you find, um, if you want it, if you prefer, it works. It works both ways. It's just um, the crank, the um, the groggy one holds the shape a little bit easier. Um, okay. And um, you can work with it a little bit easier. But um, it's gonna have a little bit of texture. This one is always very smooth. Cool. That's the main difference. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you again. Um, don't know. Oh no, there's not gonna be any class next week. Not sure what's gonna happen, but. I hope I will see you soon. <laughs> Same. Hopefully. Hopefully we'll be out the other end of this crisis soon. Yeah, exactly. Let's yeah. see how long it's going to be. Yeah. Stay safe in the meantime. Thanks, have a day. Take care. See you soon. Bye.